it's Carla and welcome to day three of our Kids Art Week 2016 and today we're going to make some collages in the, uh, inspired by an American artist named Robert Motherwell and Mr. Motherwell was born in 1915 and he was uh, worked primarily from the 40s on and he was part of the school, the New York school, where they worked with abstract art, which is art that is mostly concerned with uh, color and shape and design and not necessarily something realistic. Um, but his first uh, show uh, involved collage. He eventually became mostly a painter, but um, he, one of his very first shows was um, collage. And so I wanted to show you some of these. He was just 25 years old when he made them, uh, or around there. And um, we're going to make some kind of inspired by him. And so as we flip through these pages, I just want you to notice that there's a lot of rectangular shapes, like here, uh, here. There's a lot of circle shapes. This is a half circle. This is a little circle circles, ovals, um, and then there's also triangular shapes. Um, here's one, or if you could see it. Um, let's turn the page, and here's another one, an upside down triangle, um, circle, and rectangles. Here's another triangle. Um, another thing I want to point out is um, he often put black lines in some of his. So even he would lay down the paper and then he would paint on top with black lines and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, the other thing I wanted you to notice is the different colors of paper. Um, not so much the colors but the whether they are light or dark. So for example in this painting we have a very light value right here. It's called value. Um, the whites and the, and the sort of um, cream colors, and then the darker value would be maybe the brown and the red, and this brown, bright red, and then the mid-tone values are all the ones that are in between, like the blue. Um, so we're going to work with that too. That's going to be part of your assignment is to have light value and dark value. Um, here's another one, rectangle, circular, and let's see, yeah. So. This is where we're headed. Very exciting artist. So I had you guys get a paper bag. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down and use it as our, uh, our paper, basically. And the great thing about a paper bag is it already has a color. And that color is brown. And it's also a nice mid-tone value. It's not so dark and it's not so light. So that will give us a nice mid-tone to start from. Um, before we get started, uh, there's two ways you can work with your uh, bag. Uh, the first way is to um, cut the bag. You could even leave the handle on if you have it so that you can hang it on the wall. And just cut the side of the bag so you have a nice, a large sort of canvas. Um, in this case, I would cut it here, here, and here, and then I'd turn it over so that I would make the um, painting on the, the, the side that doesn't have as much um, I mean the collage, that doesn't have as much writing on it. The way I'm going to demonstrate uh, right now is on these smaller ones, and they are made from the bottom of the bag, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, but this is where we're headed, these sort of Motherwell collages. Now he liked to work in a vertical format, so we're going to do that too. So let me show you the supplies we'll need, and then we'll get started. So you need a paper bag, you need a stack of colored papers, and here I have a lot of different kind of colors. Um, some of them are bright colors and some of them are, are uh, neutral colors, which are the grays and maybe the light blues. And so we not only have uh, a range of values, dark, and light, but also we want to have a balance of a bright color with some neutrals. So when you're choosing your papers, and this can be 
hopefully your parents have a stash of papers you can use. Uh, if you don't have any, we're going to paint our own, so I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But basically you just need a nice selection of papers that you're going to cut up. Still going through the supplies here. Um, you're going to need uh, some crayons, including a black one. You'll need some scissors and a glue stick. And you'll also need some masking tape. And then if you're going to paint papers, you'll need uh, some blank paper. I just tore these out of my little sketchbook. And this happens to be some colored cardstock that I had lying around. And then you'll want some acrylic paint and a brush. Now this brush is dry. I haven't put it in water. In fact, I don't even have water here. And that's the sort of technique I wanted to show today. You could definitely water down the paint, paint your papers, and let that dry. But this is a nice way to do it if you don't want to spend too much time waiting for things to dry. And I'm going to use this uh, paper over here as a, a palette. Okay. And it's a dry brush. It hasn't been in the water, like I said. And I'm just going to pick some up on my, my um, brush and then drag it along. And what's going to happen is you're going to see some of the white of the paper show through. And that is kind of what we want. We want it to be an interesting painted paper. Let's see what it looks like on the green. And then, of course, if you like, you can really lay the paint on thick in a normal way. But I just wanted to show you that dry brush trick in case you want to try some um, colored paper or having uh, the white show through. So gather your papers. And if you don't have papers, you need to paint some with your acrylic paints, different colors. And then we'll get started on the assignment. I'm going to put these aside to dry. And I'm going to show you how to cut the bag. Okay, so we're doing the bottom of the bag one. So what we need to do is sort of fold it down so that it looks like this. And then we're going to take our scissors and just cut it right across, about a half inch up or about this, the, the height of your finger. I'm going to set this aside. We'll use this as a glue paper. And now what you have, you could just press it down and it's all uh, flat. If you want, you can use your tape to just flatten it out there. And now we're ready to do our collage. Okay, so this is how we do it. There's a recipe for uh, a Motherwell collage. And it's a one paper bag, which we just made. Three rectangles, a large, medium, small. Two circles, one positive, one negative. One or two triangles, a pinch of spice, and I'll explain that in a minute, some black lines, and some colored portions with crayons. So we're going to um, get going on that. What you do is you just know that you're going to need a small, medium, and large um, rectangle. You'll also need some circles. So I'm going to get some paper here that I have painted before. And I'm going to start cutting out some rectangles and some circles. I'm trimming off the edges to, right now so that I don't, I, I kind of want it to look all mostly orange with a little bit of blue showing through. I might use these scraps, but um, so here's one, two rectangles. Um, here's a rectangle I already had. I might cut this into a rectangle, or I could leave it how it is. I'll leave it how it is. 
sort of rectangle-ish. Um, I'm going to cut a circle now. So here's a circle, and then also this is the negative space circle, meaning this is the positive space, uh, which is the circle itself, and in this case, the circle is made by the negative space, or the space be behind the color. So that's what I meant when I said a circle has to be a positive one and a negative one. So keep your scraps, because you'll use them. Um, I still need some large uh, uh, rectangles. And I'm not designing right now, I'm just gathering my materials so that I have a lot to work with. That's a nice long one, isn't it? So that's a good big one. Um, and then I need some small ones. Here's a small one. Here's a small one. And over here I have some negative space circles I could use. Here's one where I cut a circle in half. Um, and here are some others that I have. So basically you just give yourself a nice little selection. And then you start playing with your, your, uh, your things. So the first thing I know is I need a large rectangle. Um, I could use this guy pretty large, or this one. That one's a good size, but it's so much the same color that I think I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go with one of these. Keep my scissors handy in case I need it. And I'm going to get my glue stick and turn my paper around. and glue it. And I want to get it on the edges so that it'll stick down really well. So now I need a medium one. Let's see. Maybe a blue would be nice. And I'm going to go ahead and leave these circles on here from the tear out because Motherwell liked circles and rectangles. So I'm going to try that. So here's a, a medium sized one. And I'm using the paper so it, the glue doesn't get all over the table. That's the idea there. And there's no rules. I'm just taking a look and seeing what feels right. And if it feels right, I'm going to stick it down. And then now I'm going to do a third rectangle, which is small. And I can overlap. I can put it right on top of this one, maybe. I kind of like this writing showing through. so. Um, I don't want to cover it all, but I, I, I think I'll cover it a little bit and just put it there. Okay. So what's next? The circles. Let's see what, what would look good. This blue one might look nice. The orange would look nice. I like this one because it matches, it gives another lighter color. So I'm going to use that one. I know I like that one. And don't think too much. Um, this is just a fun project and the idea is that you, you're, you know, you, you have very natural design instincts and wherever you put something down, if it feels right to you, that's where you should put it. I like that because it adds a dark value. I also like the orange, so I think I'm going to add both of them. So let's put this little half one here. So 
So what's next? One or two triangles. So I forgot to cut some triangles, so let's do that right now. Well, I have some over here that I had cut earlier. Here's one, two, yeah, here's one. So maybe I'll use one of these. And the fun thing is, once you've got, I'm having you glue it down first, and then you just have to make it work. Uh, you don't have to plan the whole thing out ahead of time. You just make it work based on what you have. And that's the fun part, I think. I like that. So a rectangle, I mean a triangle. <laughs> Okay, and the next one would be a pinch of spice. And what I mean by that is, look at your collage and see if you need anything else. Um, I had already decided to add that third circular shape up there, so that would be maybe some spice. Um, I'm thinking maybe it might be fun to add another orange, a little bit of orange somewhere. I like that. So the little bit of spice would be anything that you want to add to this to make it feel good to you. Okay. Now the next part of our recipe are black lines. So I'm going to get my black crayon. And again, I'm just going to look at it and think about it for a minute. Like what, what would be nice to add here? And the first thing that came to my mind was to add maybe a half circle line around this guy. And I kind of like that. So then I'm thinking maybe I would do another circle here. And I like that too. So basically my rule is if I think about it, I just do it. <laughs> So black lines wherever you think it needs to be. And I'm feeling like there's like this side and this side, so I want to sort of bridge the gap somehow. How do I want to do that? Maybe just... Sometimes it's nice to color on the top and bottom to kind of ground it. You could even go over what you have. Okay, now I'm starting to like it. I feel like it needs another little something right here. Oh, good, I like it. And then the last step is to color in some portions with um, a crayon. Now I have a white crayon, I have a yellow crayon, an orange crayon, I can do whatever I want. Um, I'm, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to choose white because there's not a whole lot of light colors. The, if you look at this, you'll see the blues are the only really light colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of my white, or my white crown here and color in some areas that I think would look nice with a little bit lighter. Okay. I think I'm going to call this one done. Uh, so I have the recipe online. I hope you have fun with this. It's cutting and pasting. You want to think about shapes. We have uh, rectangles, circles, and triangles. Uh, and you want to think about value. You want to have dark value of colors, like this blue thing, and then lighter values, like this lighter blue. And then a lot of mid-tone values, like the orange and the, um, well, the orange is kind of a dark value um, for this blue. So those are the things to think about. Have fun. I can't wait to see your collages online, and we'll see you.